Minding Your Business, next guest, Andy Campagnon from MOA, Museum of Art and History in Lancaster. That's right. And you're the curator? The I director. am. I'm the curator and museum's manager. Um, I think at the city my technical term for my job is operations manager. Um, we're part of the Parks, Rec, and Arts Department for the City of Lancaster. So um, it's an interesting job. Um, it's not just arts. Uh, there's a lot of history involved, a natural history involved. Um, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I do. I got a feeling you're overqualified for this job. Um, some people say that, yeah. Because <laughs> you're a big fish. Uh, well... In a nice way. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I'd like to think that I am sometimes. Um, I, I think that a lot of the what goes into being a big fish is maybe having a big heart and being very passionate about what I do. Um, I've been doing it a long time. I had a conversation today with our staff about um, it doesn't feel like a job if you really love what you're doing and especially if you're helping people and um, being in the arts and working for specifically for the city of Lancaster makes me a public servant um, and I like that. I like that we get to use the arts to, you know, create opportunities for people, especially young people, um, and maybe help them become more civic-minded. Um, maybe help them have pride in their and in, in ownership in the place that they live. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and the arts do that. So, I feel really lucky, actually. I would have to imagine that your crew pretty well gets it. My crew does get it. Um, there's 25 of us now at the museum. Wow. Three, three of us are full-time. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest are part-timers. So you can imagine all these young people with college degrees, they, are, they, they do this job because they love the job. Not for the money. Um, they, you know, they, like I said, work part-time. They have second jobs. But they are absolutely there because they are passionate about what they do. So at least they got that going, that they really, really love what they do. They really, doing. really love it, yeah. And it's always sad for us to, you know, lose someone to a, a full-time job, right. um, which we have. We've lost um, a lot of our staff that right out of college came to us. We trained them, and now they're working for the Getty. They're working at LACMA. Um, and, and that's kind of a nice feeling. That's a success. That is a success, yeah. We're similar in that we get them on their way up. Yeah. And then we get them when they just need a part-time job or a few hours right. or to help where they can in right. their field of expertise. And these are all locals, too. So um, for me, I'm, I'm not from the Antelope Valley, but for me, I think it's really important that our young people, you know, they leave the valley, they go to college, and they don't come back. And we want them to come back. So if we can offer them some kind of skill or training or some valuable tools that they can use in the real world, um, they might want to stay, um, but I think that's really important that we offer that. And and I'd say probably, yeah, 98% of our staff is from the Antelope Valley. That's got to cut down on those uh, freeway folks in the morning. I'm the only one. Um, I, I live up here during the week, and then I go back down the hill uh, on the weekends. Well, driving on the weekends, yeah. not too bad. It's not too bad, no. Um, I, I would say there's a we have a great success story in... Uh, my assistant, um, our programs coordinator, Robert Benitez, he started at the museum um, eight years ago as a volunteer, and now he is second in command at the museum, and uh, he has worked really hard. Um, You're paying while him too? He's getting paid, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I got it. While, while he's uh, going to college, and he's uh, finishing his bachelor's degree too, but he's really, I mean, what a success story to see a local who grew up in Palmdale, went to Palmdale High School, um, entered the high school exhibit uh, way back in the day, wow. and here he is now being one of the curators going back to his school for our an annual high school show um, as a curator. So there's, there's something really warm and fuzzy about that. I noticed on your Facebook page, it says you're an art geek and you wear a cape. I'm a super art geek. Super yeah, art so geek. Yeah, so when you're super anything, right, you, you have to have a cape. Um, but I also do wear a cape, um, and which has now kind of become a kind of signature, I don't know, a, a accessory. Um, and people recognize me because of the cape that I wear, um, and I've been photographed in it a lot. So, so now it's openings and yeah, exhibits. Yeah. And During the winter. Um, it's a winter cape. It's a winter cape, yeah. But it is a super art geek cape. Super art geek. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. And Mother's Day is coming up. Mother's Day is coming up um, next week. Um, we have our annual Mother's Day tea. It's our seventh year. Um, we are totally sold out. Really? Uh, yeah, this is our third year. We've sold out a month before the event. So what's um, involved in a tea? The tea is 
a private preview of the exhibit that will be opening on May 11th. Um, so with your ticket, you get to have a glass of champagne, walk through the museum before it opens to the public, um, have uh, private tours by the curators and the artists, and then we all sit down and we have a traditional tea, which is, you know, sandwiches and, and uh, pastries and tea and champagne. And there's a fashion show. Um, this year's fashion show, the, uh, the featured work are 10 costumes built by the students of RX Paris High School um, in the art department, led by their teacher Chris Holliday and an artist in residence that the museum um, contracted, uh, Mariel Stern. So these kids built 10 of these sound suits that were inspired by Nick Cave, the artist, and uh, they will be modeling these suits and they're really, really incredible. Um, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed with how well this project turned out. So they had professional help. They had professional help. Um, the, the project starts as, a, um, as an ask to the students, you know, what are your concerns about growing up and how, you know, what are the issues in your life? And then they, um, they relate those issues to emotions and color and then they take what they've learned from the association of color to emotions and then they build these suits out. So the suits um, also help with identity and they they're, they make sound, um, but you don't see skin color, you don't see race, you don't see gender. Um, all of those things are completely covered. So hands, feet, face, everything's covered with wow. these suits. It's a really, really the incredible project. The students are project. inside of the suits. They are, yes. And then who owns the suits? Um, the suits are being donated to the museum. Um, I think, except for one, I think one of them uh, belongs to the school. And then eventually, I think we'll be auctioning those suits off, but they're, they're pretty incredible. They will be on display in the front window of the museum for the next two months. Uh, Bob, after, did yeah. you hear about that? Bob Rod, you're going to go by there and take some photos? Yeah. Down the front yeah. window. They're pretty great. Um, we're also honoring at this tea, we're uh, honoring a citizen from the Antelope Valley who has worked very hard. Uh, that's Robin Rosenthal. She is from Juniper Hills and Little Rock area. Um, she's worked as a placemaking artist and a placekeeping artist um, and we are going to give her um, an award this year for all of her public service um, through the arts. And so that's, that's pretty much what happens at the T. Yeah. Wow. I gotta ask, how many people? 160. Yeah. Full house? Full house, yeah. Um, and then we close for two hours and then we clean up and at four o'clock we have the public reception from four to six. So we encourage people to come out and see um, the exhibit on that day because most of the artists will be in, uh, present in the museum and you get to talk to them and kind of mix and mingle and rub elbows with the artists. It's fun. Thank you for promoting Mother's Day. Oh, well I'm a mother of four, so um, yeah, I worked pretty hard. <laughs> so I feel like we should have a special day. Yeah. Yes, we should. Yeah. It's important to celebrate. Yeah, it is. Any excuse will do. But mom's Especially with champagne, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Or tea. Yeah. Or tea. And are these the sandwiches that they cut the crust off of? Uh, no. Um, this year our caterer uh, is uh, the Modern Tea Room. Oh, yeah. And uh, she's making some really interesting, artful uh, creations for us. So I'm curious to see what this is going to look like. But I think it'll be very tasty. They're a very popular um, caterer. And they, we love their location. It's right next to the museum on the boulevard. So. Art upon art upon art That's upon right. Art. That's right. You, what was, who was the fellow that painted uh, the, the crosswalks out there? Chase Arachi, yeah. That was a pretty amazing installation. That's a pretty amazing project. I was just walking it and we were talking about um, we're going to do a little touch up in August right before the event season. Um, but it's a really incredible way to marry kind of safety and the arts at the same time. Um, you can't drive through that intersection without noticing it. And we really noticed how traffic has slowed down really? because of it. Oh, so that's at first, um, a lot of people were concerned because when we took photographs of the crosswalk, you're, you know, we were up above, mm -hmm. and uh, it the kind of people kind of disappear within the graphic design. But when you're driving a car, you're not looking at it from up above, yep. and you're all of a sudden you see all this color on the ground. And, you know, what is that? And people slow down, and um, I think. I think it's been a, a really great way to k increase safety on that corner. And it also looks great. And pedestrians were there first. Pedestrians were there first, yeah. yes. And they're, they're priority number one. That's right. 
A lot of public art going on around here. A lot of public art. Um, you know, the museum helped build out the master plan, uh, master art, public art plan for the city of Lancaster, and I and I understand that Palmdale is also um, in the works right now. They're putting one together. Um, we're really excited about that because once they get their plan put together, I'd like to see a, some collaboration with us between the two cities. Um, we have similar programs, and it would be nice that you know we can share resources and um, and share opportunities for artists. Plus, when you get the two cities together, you know you can just make a project that much bigger. Um, but yeah, we've worked on the outdoor AV project with Lamar. That happened last year. Um, there's 32 murals in the downtown Lancaster right now. Probably more coming. Yeah. Oh, definitely more coming. Yeah. Everybody's got a wall. Yeah, and uh, we put out a call for wall in you know interest, and we're almost full for a 2020 project. My wife wants one. Okay. I'll give you the address. For Excellent. You. We'll take it. I'll give you the address and uh, the coordinates so you can find it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> How do people reach you? Uh, they can reach me at the museum. Um, uh, the address there is 661-723-6250, or they can email the word MOAH, M-O-A-H, at cityoflancasterca.org. People make suggestions? All the time, and we listen. Um, we were just finishing a grant with the state of California and they asked um, how do we measure our successes and one of the best ways of measuring our successes are letters and feedback from the community and that's how we know our programs are effective when we actually have real people uh, let us know what's going on. Thank you Andy. have been talking with Andy Campagnon from MOA. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.